Coach, you had a, um, a, a, an incredible senior class here. Their accomplishments speak for themselves. 35-2, and two, I believe, over the last three years, including two state championships. And uh, I know that you love those kids and you're going to miss those kids. And I wanted to just ask you, kind of a, give me just kind of a snapshot into who those kids were. Yeah, I remember watching these kids when they were younger, knowing they'd be a special group of, of young men. Very competitive group of kids. Um, God, I feel like Jack Theodore has been around our program since uh, I've been at Hammond for 13 years. And uh, his face certainly comes to forefront first, just because of how long he's been around. Mm -hmm. um, but and Jack kind of embodied that whole senior class, very competitive kids. We won a lot of games um, with their leadership. Uh, they were huge parts of two undefeated seasons. Uh, they contri a lot of them contributed to sophomores um, to that undefeated season two years ago. And uh, when I look back at what they've accomplished over the last three years, I'm just really proud. One kid that I do want to mention because, gosh, if it was your son or my son, we'd feel so badly about it. And we do anyway. But uh, uh, Brad Lewis going out, you know, he was a guy that was one of your captains and not being able to play. I know that was really tough for him. And, uh, you know, he didn't. That's life. But. But he was still a valuable member of the team, too. And he was, and it speaks to the person that Brad is. And, uh, yeah, it was a devastating loss early in the season, second game, um, losing him to an ACL injury. Um, but Brad's such a talented kid. He really, he really um, is kind of the standard of what it means to be a, a, a student athlete at Hammond School. Um, he plays almost every sport. He's a lead act in a play. He can sing. He's a straight-A student. Um, and it's just it's by no surprise that he comes from a great family and represents our school so well. Um, but, you know, there, all of those guys were a lot like Brad in that sense and accomplished so much. I want to ask you about Skiza this year. Last year, the conversation that, that we and a lot of other people were having because it was a fact that there, there was a parity of sorts, but it was a higher level of parity than we had ever seen in Skiza. There were a lot of teams that were better than they had ever been before, and it was competitive going pretty deep down the list. This year, it seems like that kind of went away, uh, kind of suddenly, where there was the Skyhawks, the Falcons have been lipping, uh, Porter Gow down in Charleston is apparently pretty good, but they kind of distinctly separated from everybody else. Uh, did you do you concur with that? Yeah, I think at the beginning of the year we were we thought we'd been be in for more tough games, uh, but you never know what can happen in a season. A lot of the schools that we played were either banged up a little bit or had faced some other type of adversity later in the season. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, of course, the landscape is more competitive than ever. I think you see more kids in our league now that are going to go play college football. Um, and I think we represent um, Skiza very well. I think that a lot of these teams can be very, very competitive in, you know, 2A to sometimes 3A public school football. And as far as I uh, have to ask it, because you're a victim here of your own success. You have eight state titles in 10 years, and you were two in a row, I think, going into, going into this year. And at one point, 27-game winning streak. And there's a time when you get used to it where, I mean, as a fan, you might say you didn't feel it as a coach, but it, it was kind of a perception of, gosh, you're never going to lose, you know, because you haven't, can't even remember last time you lost a game. Um, what's it like? just bluntly sure. not winning a state title because you've won so many of them in the last decade. I mean, is it kind of like, oh, yeah, that doesn't feel so great? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, listen, anytime you lose a football game and we've lost our share around here, um, it's kind of a mini death in terms of you kind of grieve that, that game and that loss and then you move on. Now, listen, this year we had a great team and we got better, and that's what we try to focus on is our guys and getting them better. And fundamentally, we just ran into a team that was better than we were. And you have to give credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Lippin has a fantastic football team. They did a good job of staying together as a unit. And uh, they played a really, really nice football game against us the other night and, and mm -hmm. forced us to make some mistakes that were our undoing. Um, so we'll, we'll sit back and, and we'll meet as coaches and figure out where we can learn and try to get better and move forward. Um, but, you know, I've never tried to judge my career or our program on one season. Uh, I'm only 37. I got a long ways to go in this profession, and I'm excited about the challenge of the off season and trying to be competitive in kind of this new landscape in Skiza. All right, man. Uh, again, congratulations and to that class that we just talked about, 35 and two over the last, and and frankly, other than one school, 35 and up.
with two state championships. It's pretty doggone impressive. Really proud of them. All right, man. Thank you, Thank you buddy.